And a great answer starts with a good idea. And then it's organised, there's evidence, there's a good level of explanation, and it answers the question from start to finish. And that's what we're aiming for. We start with a big idea, and then we follow this argument through a series of main points, of stepping stones, we keep it simple, and then in that we have all of our detail, our evidence, our facts and our figures. But we have a simple path to arguing out a nice idea. Because of the Vietnamese, we're going to give a statement and then argue this statement simply using point, evidence, explanation and link for your A grade. We can put the reason for America's defeat in the Vietnam War down to, let's say, four main fundamental areas. The people, the tactics, the terrain, and motivation. They'll break down themselves, but we can break that down into four areas. For the Vietnamese, it was a serious affair. It was death or victory, the way that they went home was to win the war. Or to die. It was a case of get out of our country, we have no other way to finish this than to win it. For the Americans, it was a case of if we do one year here and survive, we get to go home back to a comfortable world and forget all about this war. It was a massive, massive difference in motivation. Videos where I look at the causes of war, I normally put it down to three things. One, power, the fundamental cause. Number two, there'll be belief, an ism, a justification. There'll be something to keep the masses supporting the war, fighting and dying. Otherwise the war won't have legs. If you, if you get me. And the other thing is the, the trigger, the catalyst. Justification plays a large part. Now, for a war to continue, great if you just win it, if it's not very popular, but if it's unpopular, you need to be winning it. And the Americans weren't, there was no, no sign. So if you're in for a long war, you need your people to be behind the war. You need your people to be unified. And if 80% of the Vietnamese population wanted Ho Chi Minh. And if that meant that Vietnam was unified against the Americans, most of. The Vietnamese people were unified, the people. The American people were not, for several reasons. Many of the soldiers who were drafted, who were sent, conscripted against their will to go to Vietnam were young and poor and badly educated. A disproportionate amount of these people who hadn't really got the best of what America was offering, a disproportionate percentage were young black males, young black men. who were living in a segregated, a racially segregated society, come out of a history of slavery. You can understand why they might not be happy to go and fight in the war. You can see how this issue could serve to chip away and start to make American society, the American people as one unit, crumble and start falling apart, if you like.
You need to feel like you're the good guys. You need to feel some sort of justification for the, the, the horror that is war. And if you have to look at your own society and ask some really serious questions about its morality, its ethics, its, its rights and wrongs, and why your society is dropping bombs on another one, why are you doing this? For a lot of people it was a question. For, for black people it was, a, it was a fuel for the civil rights movement for Martin Luther King and people like Muhammad Ali who refused to go, who I think is quoted as saying, no Vietnamese ever called me nigger. Um, it became a very famous quote to sum up um, the way really that the Vietnam War divided the American people. A people who had for a long time almost been encouraged, almost they had been racially divided between different waves of immigrants, black slaves, white slavers. You know, America was a divided society and I think Vietnam really shone um, a beacon onto the, these divisions. I think Vietnam really made people look at the, the rights and wrongs of American society when they asked themselves, why are we there? For what cause? Why is our system? We're fighting this domino theory, this vague domino theory against some sort of system. So surely our system must be good. And then when you look at slavery and segregation, etc, 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 people were starting to ask too many questions. And then that takes us back to the main point, which is America would lose the war when it lost the will to fight. Ho Chi Minh knew that all he had to do was keep the pressure up and the public opinion in America would eventually turn against the war if they couldn't win it. His, possibly his best move here came in 1968 with the Tet Offensive. It was a mass surprise attack. against targets all across Vietnam and it was filmed, it was filmed by the American press, it was meant to be a media event in a way. For the Viet Cong it was actually a military disaster, they got themselves killed. The NLF, the National Liberation Front, the Viet Cong were destroyed as a fighting force really by the Tet Offensive in 1968. But if they died in 1968, then the American public's will to carry on after seeing the US Embassy, for example, in Saigon overrun, their will to carry on with a war that, one, they didn't really know why they were fighting it. Their soldiers themselves were mostly conscripts who got no desire, got no need to fight and die in this war. There were no useful tactics apart from to go out there and kill there was nothing really to to capture or there were no maneuvers on the battlefield to be done this was just an endless quagmire a bog an endless war that america had got sucked into and as long as the vietnamese didn't quit then in the end it was going to go their way. So, for their own reasons, their tactics, their personality, their history, the Vietnamese did not quit. And America didn't get the quick, decisive, we're the good guys kind of war that they wanted. And finally, in the end up, the media's coverage of the war, the media's coverage of the Tet Offensive, 
this was going to erode and destroy America's willpower to carry on fighting a war that it blatantly was not coming any closer to finishing or winning at all. You see, we've talked about different types of war in this video, and it was essential for the Americans, for the United States, to try to fight a guerrilla war, to be more calm about it, to try not to kill as many people as possible. Guerrilla warfare is a bit like, you can hide, you can plant a bomb, you can blow someone up, and if, you, if you're not caught, you can keep doing it over and over again. It doesn't matter how many times people throw explosives out into the neighborhood. See, all the Americans would do when they searched and destroyed, when they dropped napalm, when they carpet bombed with B-52s, all they were doing was making enemies. You kill somebody's family, you kill a person, you've got two, three, four, five people who want to avenge the death of this person. In guerrilla warfare, you're supposed to take care. It's almost half war, half police action. And yet, the Americans were not heeding this. It's not gonna help anyone. It's not gonna defeat you. You're gonna keep going out and doing it. So the Americans were caught in a guerrilla war and they were trying to win it using tactics from World War II in a sense. The Americans were fighting a guerrilla war were trying to fight the Germans, if you like, and just kill as many of the enemy as possible. It didn't work like that. They look nice enough from here, but you start dropping bombs on them and you watch them go. You see, the, the tactics that the Americans were using, throw lots of bombs, kill lots of people, body count, it was counterproductive. They weren't destroying the enemy, they were waking the monster, they were waking the dragon, if you like. They were making more enemies. Their tactics meant that they could not win the war. And if they could not win the war at some point, the people back home were going to demand that they finish the war. It could not win a guerrilla war in Vietnam under those circumstances, with those tactics, against those people. And eventually the inevitable happened. The good people of the United States saw what was happening on the TV stations saw what was happening on the news every night, came to realize that they were not Captain America, they were not the good guys, that they were destroying the country that they thought they were supposed to be saving, and the will to fight disappeared. One of the tactics was to bomb the North. Operation Rolling Thunder was a bombing campaign against the Northern Vietnamese that was aimed to destroy their will to fight. Bomb the North back to the Stone Age, as they said, leave it in a pile of rubble, and politically Ho Chi Minh will lose the will to fight.
the US leadership hoped by bombing the living daylights out of the North that the North would look for peace. The Americans used helicopters uh, for medical evacuations, for search and destroy, for transporting their troops around. Um, this was one of the tactics that they developed extremely effectively, the use of helicopters, mobile air cavalry it was called. The Americans did a lot of things well in the war. I do simplify what I'm trying to say because you're not writing a dissertation, you're writing GCSE exam. So, search and destroy and the use of helicopters. The US used defoliants such as Agent Orange to kill the jungle canopy because the terrain was so difficult, the terrain, the hills and the jungles and the swamps made it very difficult to actually pin down, find, pin down and destroy the enemy. So using defoliants, chemical warfare against the trees. Chemical warfare against the trees was one of the tactics, but this, yeah, it may have had some success, but at the cost of America's international reputation and its ethics in doing this were harder and harder to defend. Agent Orange still causes um, untold uh, damage and misery today. As we've said, um, the terrain was one of the problems for the Americans. It was a, a massive contributory factor Hills, jungle, thick canopy, lots of places for the enemy to hide. Very difficult to find them, fix them in position and blow them up, which is what the Americans were very, very good at and very equipped to do. But if you can't find the enemy, you can't get to them and they can hide from you. You want a massive, you want a massive fight and you're faced with a massive game of hide and seek that you need to try to get finished because of the terrain. Green, hilly, jungles, swamps, the terrain. Very beautiful. Vietnam is very, 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 very beautiful. But it's got lots of jungles and lots of hills, lots of snakes, lots of scorpions and insects and rain and the terrain and weather and the whole environment would be very, very difficult for these young inexperienced conscripts. It's not to say that there weren't American soldiers who did really, really, really well and that adapted. I'm talking generally for the US Army, for the troops, the average soldier, they found Vietnam a very difficult place to operate. And their tactics had to adapt, and they did to an extent, but not, not large scale enough not quick enough and the bulk of the army it's too too jungly it was too jungly and that's why I've been putting grass everywhere on my videos the American war effort was getting bogged down in the jungle in the jungle just like the French warned them that it would Supplies were coming down the Ho Chi Minh Trail from the north. This was keeping the Viet Cong, the other part of the communist forces, fighting the war, this endless, unwinnable war. Supplies were coming down a series of trails cut through the jungle, um, through Vietnam, through Laos, through Cambodia. This was called the Ho Chi Minh Trail and the Americans bombed and bombed and bombed. The 
but that just forced the trail out of Vietnam, further into Laos, further into Cambodia. You can't really bomb a series of jungle trails into non-existence. And it was expensive for America. It cost a hell of a lot of money for one bomb. And it was taking bomb after bomb after bomb after bomb to kill one enemy soldier. You destroy a bamboo bridge in a B-52 raid and it's just rebuilt the next day. So the Americans failed to, to cut the Ho Chi Minh Trail. They failed to stop the supply lines coming from the north down into the south of the country. The war would drag on and on and on, and eventually America would pull out. Helicopters worked. Helicopters were effective. The Vietnamese were scared of, of airborne troops because they could suddenly appear uh, from nowhere. This was one thing the Americans did to try to nullify the advantage that the Vietnamese had got with the, the jungle canopy and the, the hilly terrain that they were hiding in. But it wasn't enough to tip the balance. Like the, the American advantage lay in the amount of weapons, um, the amount of ammunition it could bring onto a battlefield. The Vietnamese obviously tried to counteract this. They did something, they hid and they ambushed. They didn't come out and fight when the Americans wanted them to fight. They chose the time. That's, that's what ambushes are all about. That's what guerrilla tactics are all about. When it came to big battles, because the North Vietnamese army and the Viet Cong did engage the Americans in big battles and they were extremely scared of the American firepower that they could bring in with artillery and airstrikes, napalm, white phosphorus, high explosives, gunships, miniguns, all of these things. So to nullify the American advantage, they adopted tactics known as grabbing the enemy by the belt of the buckle which meant staying so close that he couldn't drop all of his bombs on you without risking killing his own soldiers. Very brave and very clever tactics. So the Vietnam War and why America lost, um, it was simplified for you at the start. It was then chewed over in the middle um, looked at all the different aspects of people, terrain, tactics and motivation. So then we've seen that America needed a quick war, but it was fighting using the wrong tactics against an enemy that was using the right tactics. It was fighting on a very difficult terrain. So instead, America got an endless televised brutality. And because of this, they eventually, American society lost its will to fight. Increasingly, let's say, unpopular and unjustifiable war. And so it lost.